let's solve problem number 4 on space complexity of recursive algorithms here is the problem what is the space complexity of the following c program this is the c program available in front of us we need to determine the space complexity of this program this time we are given with the program and not the algorithm in order to find the space complexity there is no need to convert this program to its equivalent algorithm we do this because reading an algorithm and understanding it is pretty easy and therefore finding the space complexity of an algorithm is easier compared to a program but this program is simple enough to understand hence there is no need to convert this program to its equivalent algorithm to find the space complexity we can directly find the space complexity of the c program let's dive into the solution and now let's try to find the space complexity of this c program here we can observe this is the rec function and within this function variable n is declared this means the input it receives is n inside this function we are checking this condition if n is equal to 1 then we will return 1 from this function the return type here is integer and we are also returning an integer if n is equal to 1 then 1 will be returned from this function otherwise what happens we need to call rec of n minus 1 twice and add whatever we get from these two functions and then return the final value this will be an integer as the return type is integer so within this function rec of n we are calling rec of n minus 1 twice and this must be our focus. We do not have to worry about the value that we will get from this function at the end. We must only be concerned about the flow of recursion. Because eventually in order to find the space complexity, we need to know the depth of recursion. And in order to find the depth of recursion, we need to understand the flow of recursive calls. So now, our job is to know the flow of recursive calls which will help us determine the depth of recursion and which eventually help us finding the space complexity. We learned in our previous lectures that finding the space complexity of a recursive algorithm is same as finding the space required to store the data structure plus depth of recursion. In this program, we are not using any data structure. Hence, the space required for data structure is zero. So, space complexity of this program depends on the depth of recursion of this program. Now, let's find the depth of recursion by observing the flow of recursive calls. For the first time, rec of n is called, and from rec of n, we now need to call rec of n minus 1 twice. I'm assuming the else block will be executed and not the if block because I want to know the flow of recursion, and for this, this base case must not be satisfied for the first function call. I am assuming n is not equal to 1, it is much greater than 1. So, this condition is not satisfied and hence the else block will be executed. And therefore, from rec of n, there will be two function calls, rec of n minus 1 and rec of n minus 1. Now, what happens after this? The similar thing happens for these two function calls as well. From rec of n minus 1, rec of n minus 2 will be called twice. Why? Because the value of n at this moment is n minus 1. So we now need to replace n by n minus 1 in these two function calls. Again, I'm assuming the base case is not satisfied and the else block will be executed. I'm again repeating this that I'm doing this because I want to know the flow of function calls because eventually I'm interested in knowing the flow of recursion which will help us finding the depth of recursion. So I'm assuming the else block will be executed for this function call and this function call. And as we can see the value of n is n minus 1. So n will be replaced by n minus 1. We will get n minus 2 here and here as well. So from rec of n minus 1 there will be two function calls rec of n minus 2 and rec of n minus 2. The same thing happens for this function call as well. So one thing is clear, the level after this has four function calls, with all functions being rec of n minus 2. So these are all the function calls. Here we have a total of four function calls. Because of the lack of space, 
I'm only mentioning these two function calls and the function calls between these two are represented with three dots. So remember, there are four function calls in this level. Up to this point, we have a total of three levels. In level one, we have n here. In level two, we have n minus one in these two function calls. And in level three, we have n minus two in all the function calls we have in this level. We can proceed in this way and can continue up to rec of n minus k. Here we can observe a pattern. We have n minus 0 at first, then we have n minus 1, then n minus 2. So let us assume that the last level has all functions as rec of n minus k. There will be many functions in the last level and all of them are rec of n minus k. As we can observe in our previous levels, each level has the same functions. Like in this level, we have all functions as rec of n minus 2. In this level, we have all functions as rec of n minus 1. Similarly, in the last level also, we have all functions as rec of n minus k. As I am assuming this is the last level, so n minus k must be equal to 1, so that the base case must be satisfied and we return 1 from these function calls in the last level. This is because I am assuming this is the last level and there are no more function calls after this level. So, the base case must be satisfied for all the function calls of this level. I hope this idea is clear. And what about the depth of this recursion? We know the depth of recursion is same as the number of levels. This is level number 1 and here we have n minus 0. This is level number 2 and here in these two functions we have n minus 1. In level 3 we have n minus 2 in all these functions. It is clear that these constants are dependent on the level number. Here we have n minus 2, so we know we are in level number 3 because the constant is always 1 less than the level number. This is what we can observe. If we are at level number 3, then all the function calls in that level must be rec of n minus 2. If we are at level number 2, then all the functions in that level must be rec of n minus 1. Similarly, we can say that in level number k plus 1, we have all the functions as rec of n minus k. So, there are a total of k plus 1 levels from 1 to k plus 1. Therefore, the depth of this recursion is k plus 1. So, this is the depth so obtained. Now, we need to represent k in terms of the input size which is n. We have assumed that this is the last level and hence n minus k must be equal to 1. Then only the base case will be satisfied and there will be no more function calls. The recursive case must not be satisfied for the last level. Hence, n minus k is equal to 1. So, let's assume that n minus k is 1. Therefore, k must be equal to n minus 1. From this equation, we can easily obtain the value of k. k is equal to n minus 1. So, now we can replace k by n minus 1 and we will get depth as n. So, depth of this recursion is n. And hence, the space complexity of this program must be big O of n. This is the space complexity of this program. And this is the worst case space complexity. What about the best case? Best case is omega of 1. Because if the base case is satisfied for the first function call, then it will be the best case. So, best case is omega of 1. But worst case is big O of n. So, with this, I hope you understood how to find the space complexity of these type of programs. In this program, we can observe that we are calling two functions and finding the depth of recursion gives us the space complexity of these type of programs. So, with this, we understood how to find the space complexity of these type of programs and this means we are done with this topic and this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.